All right, we're going to be learning GitHub branching, merging, and pull requests today. If you're new to GitHub, which I'm assuming you are because you're learning this lesson, definitely check out video one in the description. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's really going to be of help. Uh, let's get into basically this is level two, and it's about it for what you need to know to use GitHub day in and day out. Uh, one of the common things that you use all the time with GitHub is branching. And what that is, if you picture a tree, you've got the trunk, and once you create a branch, a branch comes out, you'd make code changes on that branch, and then you can merge that branch back in with the trunk. It becomes a part of the trunk, and everybody else's branches can inherit from it. But it's easier to show you than to tell you, so let's just get into it. Fictitious example here, we have an HTML page with one module on it, and you get a work request to add module number two. There's other people on the team. You're not the only one. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a branch for module two. You're going to build it on that, and then you're going to create a pull request for other people to code review it. But you don't know what those things are yet, so let's just show you. First thing you're going to do is you're going to do a git pull. Make sure you get the most recent version of master. We're on the master branch right now. I can see that because I'm using what's called bash it. I'm going to add that to... Uh, the description as well because you'll really like using that uh, but do this command real quick and do git branch you'll see I have one branch which is master that's where all the code is sitting right now so if I go git branch feature one let's say I'm adding feature one and then I hit git branch again whoop. now I have feature one this is a complete copy of all my code from the master branch. So whatever branch you're on at the time you type git branch, it will create a copy of that and call it whatever your new one is. So now I have a complete copy of master called feature one, and now I can switch to it by going git checkout feature one. So now you'll notice I'm on feature one. Again, you won't see this unless you're using bash it, but now I can make code changes on feature one and it's not going to affect anything going on on master. Um, so what I'm going to do is my work request is to do two things. It's to delete these two items <clears throat> and it's to add a new module. And so I'm just going to go div my awesome new module about news sure there we go module 2 is added bingo and so now I'm going to get add I'll do get status so yep that's all I changed get to add a to add all my changes get commit M to say added news module and ideally if I knew in advance that it was called the news module this would not have been called feature one, it would have been called news module or news module edition branch. So uh, that way it makes more sense if you see the branches, you don't just see feature one. Well, who knows what feature one is? Um, the branch for news module. So now if I go get branch, there we go. Um, I'm ready to create a pull request now, which pull request pushes your code up to GitHub for other people to see your changes and peer review them. Other people on the team, uh, possibly a team lead if you're new, uh, and it's a very common practice for uh, companies to require a peer on your team to review every pull request that you make, so you guys are kind of keeping each other accountable. One thing you want to do before you create your pull request is you want to go back to the master branch, or whatever branch you're merging this into, because um, you can have a branch of a branch of a branch of a branch. We're going to go get get checkout master, and we're going to do a pull to make sure that master has not changed in the, let's say, three hours that we've been working on this. And yep, there were some changes. It updated. So let's go back to our feature now. Check out feature one. Man, my brain is just not typing right today. Happens sometimes. I'm going to get merge master. What this is going to do is it's going to take all the changes and updates to master, and it's going to try to merge them back into feature one branch it says there was a conflict on there merge fail which means that somewhere along the line somebody else touched the same lines that we are touching so i'm going to click on my file and yep you see that there's some conflicts here head which is me ah you know what happened it sometimes is a little tricky to figure out what's going on here it says that i added this within module two and they added this within module two which means 
we both added these exact same two lines, but these ones were different. So they tried to add a module two and I tried to add a module two. So let's do this. Now I actually have to just kind of rewrite my code. So there's, I'm going to call there's module two. Sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out what happened in an actual, ah, can't do that. There you go, module three. Sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out what actually happens when you see all those merge conflicts. I was able to just determine that, okay, we both tried to add a module two. So it's saying there's no problems here, that your lines are identical. These ones is what's not making sense. So there we go, got that done. I'm gonna go get status again. Okay, now it's both modified. Now I hit get commit. And if you'll remember from my last video, whenever it shows you these big long commit messages, you go escape colon wq and that's going to save and commit your commit i know that's weird escape colon wq uh, but that's what it is and now i can do git push and depending on what your push settings are on my mine it warns me that it doesn't know where to push it to so it gives me the command push and set upstream to origin feature one so now feature one has been pushed up to github and if i go to github I can see that there's actually, and refresh, I can see there's actually two GitHub branches here, master and feature one. Feature one's got the new modules, and if I go to master, master has the new module that the other guy added. That's another way you can figure out what the heck is going on. If you actually go to GitHub, look at the master branch and see what they are expecting the code to look like. Uh, module two, div my content, that will help you in, uh, whenever you're dealing with merge conflicts. I do that a lot. If a merge conflict just doesn't make sense, I'm gonna look at master and see what they committed to master before it started causing problems. So I'm on feature one again. You'll notice that GitHub gives you this nice thing. Your recently pushed branch is feature one. So I'm gonna, you can either click there, or in this case, I'll just go to feature one and click this little green button that says compare, review, or pull request. And so now it just shows in green the things I've changed. I can create a pull request. And you can add any comments there. Hey, at somebody, can you please check this out? You can do it just like Twitter. Hey, can you check this out? Send pull request. Um, and there you go. Now I've got a pull request. I can see what two commits went in. I did an add and I did a merge. The merge counted as a commit. And then you can have some conversation back and forth and then somebody can merge this for you. It's usually a bad idea to merge your own pull request, but I can hit merge and confirm. And there you go. Now it is into master. So now if I go to master, click on index, I've got my modules two and three there because my feature was in. And I should have, when I was on the pull request, deleted the branch because, I don't know, some people like to delete branches. So I can go and delete that branch. So now if I go back to master here and do a pull, there you go. I've got all three modules and I'm on the master branch. So that's the whole workflow. You may have to watch this two or three times to get a feel, but this is what you do day in and day out. You get a feature request, make a branch for it, code in your feature, commit it, and then put it back up, uh, merge master back into it, and then push that up and make a pull request. That pull request gets code reviewed, gets merges. One more thing that might not be bad to point out is, is that if you have a pull request out there, you can add more merges to it. Let me make another uh, branch here. I'll just call this one news. There you go. Let me make one change. I don't know. Delete that stuff. There you go. So I'm just uh, basically just doing some stuff here. Once again, I like, for whatever reason, I like this Git setting where it always makes me choose what branch it's going to. Lots of people that drives them nuts. Okay. What I just did is I made a new feature, made some changes, committed those changes, pushed them up. I did not bother uh, merging master back in. So now if I go back to Wilstern dummy test, I can go to the news branch. 
Let's make a pull request. Go on his news. Sure. Let's say somebody else looks at it and says, um, ah, there's some extra white space in there that you also need to delete. You get an email that somebody wants you to clean up the white space. Yeah, I guess I can clean up that white space. So I saw his email. I'm going to clean this code out. Save that. And I'm going to do another push. And you'll see that I'm going to have a second commit. There you go. Go on his news, remove white space. You can add commits to your pull requests after you've made them. So that's kind of how the back and forth dialog goes. Uh, you'll delete some stuff. You can also go to these commits. Uh, the files change. You can actually, it would have been better if the guy would have commented on the actual line. And so that's kind of how the dialog takes place back and forth. And then the pull requests are closed, the branches are gone, and Master keeps living on. There's the video. Hope you liked it, and have a great day.